majority of people allow their dreams to die. It's hard living your dream. It's hard taking the heat in the kitchen. Most people won't do that. Most people don't have that kind of boldness about them. That kind of gutsy attitude about life. It's hard, yes. Changing your life, breaking habits, rebuilding yourself. It's hard starting all over again. That's hard. When you're in charge of your attitude, you say, if it's hard, then do it hard. Come up, stand up front, and take life on, and take it into power. I won't allow this to stop me. So what if it's hard? Do it hard. It's worth it. It's worth it to me to pay this kind of price. Really doesn't matter what you're going through. How you deal with it, that's all that matters your dreams, your goals, your aspirations, your ideas, your thoughts. Everything that you ever dreamed and imagined is trash without action. Tomorrow is where the lazy get up and put into action, but nobody in this room is lazy. One of the most expensive things that you will ever experience in your lifetime is a missed opportunity. This is my time, this is my moment. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Ain't no such thing as tomorrow. We only got today. You have an opportunity right now that you'll never have. You better not lose this. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. Your grandma counting on you to do the right thing. Your mama counting on you. Your cousins, your brothers and sisters are counting on you to, to cash in on this opportunity. It's necessary that I live my dream, that I do my work, that I'm working constantly to express who I am. It's on me. I'm the one that's got to do this. This is my signature on the planet. I know it's not going to be easy, it's going to be hard, but it's worth it because it's my life purpose. And if you advance confidently in the direction of your dream and endeavor to live the life that you have imagined, you will meet with a success unexpected in promenade. You will put something behind you. Now the universe is rising up on your side because of your courage, because of your faith, because of your determination, because of your guts, because of your imagination, because of your relentlessness. The universe stands aside to the man or woman who knows where they're going. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage AD's Chairman and CEO, Bill Weisberg. Well, thank you, and good afternoon, AD. It's a great honor and a privilege to get to address this group every year, a group of people I truly respect, people with great attitude and drive, character and success. My role at this meeting each year is to give you an update on the things that are happening in AD overall. And it is a pleasure to do that this year because there are so many tremendous things happening these days. They are, quite frankly, the fruit of many years of hard work, teamwork, good governance, and collaboration. We set high goals for ourselves at AD, and we have long to-do lists. But our attitudes, like yours, are exceptional. Our morale is strong. Our engagement scores with our members and suppliers reflect that and are at record levels. We're having a record-breaking year in so many ways, inside the group and overall in the AD community. Year to date, we are seeing a 15% increase in total member sales. We're forecasting across our 12 divisions in three countries to hit, are you ready for this number? $46 billion. <laughs> hey,
Hey, if we were one company, we would be in the top 250 of all the corporations in the world. And we're setting a new sales record every year. 2019 will be our fourth straight year of double digit growth, our sixth such year in the last seven. And we expect the purchases that we're making together from AD suppliers to grow this year by over $1.2 billion. Virtually every AD division and business unit is on track to set a new record for total sales, for member purchases from AD suppliers, and for net distributions. The net distributions that we're forecasted to end this year with are just shy of $800 million on $12.5 billion of supplier purchases. Those are big numbers, but we're executing on a plan, too, to deliver innovative and new programs, value-added programs, while at the same time driving AD's operating expenses as a percent of the business that we do into record low territory. We've expanded our service set. We've increased our bench strength. We've strengthened our supplier relationships, and we've done so with prudent cost effectiveness. Now every year, we do lose some members when they sell their businesses. We had, have had 11 members out of the 800 we have in all our various divisions sell outside the group so far this year, and two of those were sizable. We've also had 30 independents who were outside the group who were bought by existing members and brought in. And we've had a record 240 other independents who have joined us this year. 240. 208 of those were from the three mergers that we completed this year. But 32 others, and counting, left the various groups that they were in on their own to join us in the AD community. Meanwhile, we have, and are fortunate to say that we have had, zero defections. 32 and zero. That's like two whole seasons of the New England Patriots. <laughs> Now, in spite of industry consolidation, in spite of robust recruitment competition from other groups, we are growing and we are winning. And we learn a lot. We learn a lot when we bring in companies from other groups. We get factual data to benchmark ourselves against. And here's what we have learned. AD has the largest array of programs and services. We have the highest rebates, and we have the lowest cost to serve. Not rhetoric, not a PR slogan, facts. We deliver the most value, and we do it at the lowest cost. And we don't do this in order to be better than the competition, we do it because our members deserve it. Our members demand it. Companies that are the best demand the very best. Now these things that we do, they take hard work. They take focus and intentionality. They take, most importantly, a team of people pulling together. And I'm talking about staff, members, and suppliers. On a local industry level, our staff is directed, coached, and encouraged by divisional boards of directors, divisional product committees, divisional supplier advisory councils, and divisional networks. And on a corporate level, our staff is directed and supervised 
by the AD corporate board, entities that represent a cross-section of our community with appropriate skills. They are directly elected now by all our members. We are a powerful community, friends, of great independents, great suppliers, and great associates who share a passion for excellence, innovation, operational execution, and success. It is a true pleasure and an honor to be the CEO at AD. This is my, fifth, my 35th year at the company, 35 years. That's like a whole generation. In fact, I have witnessed and seen parts of three generations here in my tenure to date. For some of you here today, I knew your grandparents, great people, legends, frankly. I walked into AD, I was 28 years old. I'm 63 today. Time flies when you're having fun. The first seven years I spent working for my father, our group's founder, and learning at his side. These past 28 I've been at the helm, learning from the people that I work with, from our board of directors, and from so many of you here today. I've been through a lot in those 35 years, as many of you know, not just professionally, but personally too. I was married, got divorced, dated, got remarried, and pretty much in that order. <laughs> I had three kids with my first wife. I've had five more with my second. I've worked hard, I still work hard, and I played hard back then too. I lost my way along the way, frankly. I truly did lose it, but I found my way back. I've experienced salvation, redemption, recovery, sobriety, a whole lot more. You name it, I've been through it, and I have t-shirts hanging in my closet to prove it. I have been living a full life and a blessed one too. There are a lot of things from work that I'm proud of, innovations and accomplishments that I've played a small part in. Our networks, the national account program, e-commerce, HR, our entry into Canada, Mexico, other industries. I love seeing good ideas become reality. I get tremendous gratification from making a positive difference. But let me tell you one of the most important things that I've learned about work. You are blessed if you are able to work at a company that you truly believe in. You are blessed if you are able to actively engage in a cause that resonates with you personally. And you're blessed if you're able to work with people who are equally committed and passionate about what they do. And you're blessed, friends, if you can truly say, I'm all in. You see, being all in isn't just a blessing to the people around us, it's a blessing to ourselves. And I've been blessed in all those ways at AD. <clears throat> I'm all in for what AD stands for. I'm all in on what we do. I'm all in on who we do it for and who I get to do it with. I hope you are too, because we don't want anybody here to be complacent or blasé, member, supplier, or associate. We want you actively participating. We want you outspoken. Can't believe I'm encouraging that, but it's true. We want you contributing. We want you engaged. We want you making an impact on others and allowing others to make an impact on you. We don't 
just want you in AD. We want you all in. And let me give you, if I may, four reasons why I believe you should be. And those are our cause, our strategy, our way, and our spirit. What is our cause? We are all in, baby, for independence. What is our strategy? We're all in for providing the most value at the very best value. What is our way? We're all in on great people, great service, treating our business partners with respect, a winning culture, and good governance. And finally, what is our spirit? We're all in on yes, we can. Yes, we will. And yes, we do. We're all in on the future, and we're all in on today. That is AD. I say our cause is independence. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we exist to help independence win. That's our purpose. We help the good guys win. And that's a good and noble thing to do. But that is not the whole of it. See, we don't just serve independence. We don't just help independence. We believe in independence. We believe that independent distributors have a better business model and a better approach to doing business than the international chains. And we believe as a result that independence will continue to prosper long into the future. Now that is not conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom will tell you that independents are doomed, relics of the past, living on borrowed time, the walking dead. Now, it's not very nice to call people the walking dead, but that's what people truly think about us sometimes, and we all know that because we've heard it so many times. I've heard it every year that I've worked at, every, at AD. Every generation of independence, including your grandparents' generation, has been told the very same thing. Remember, all phase, they're going to put you out of business. Amfac, they're going to put you out of business. Jesco, they're going to put you out of business. Home Depot Supply, they're going to put you out of business. Oh, they didn't. Well, maybe the next one. It's a broken record. That is conventional wisdom. And yet, and yet, here you are, growing, winning, expanding, thriving. In every generation, independents grow at a faster rate than chains. In every generation, in every industry, in every local market, independents grow at a faster rate than change. It's not a theory, this is a fact. How can conventional wisdom be so wrong? Well, the first thing you know and you need to know about conventional wisdom is that conventional wisdom is always wrong. But second, let me tell you the real bottom line reason. See, when most people think about independence and chains, they think it's like David battling Goliath, the little man against the big giant. And it is like that in a way, but not in the way that most people think. When people think about the David and Goliath story, there's mostly two different schools of thought. One school would be that it's a cute fairy tale. Another would be that it's a miracle and a story of faith. But there is a third answer to why David beat Goliath. And I read about it a few years ago in a book by Malcolm Gladwell. And he explained that David didn't beat Goliath by some miracle or act of God. He beat him because people who fight 
like David fights, always beat people who fight like Goliath. You see, back in the day, back in ancient times, there were three kinds of warriors. You had the cavalry, mostly chariots and people on horseback. You had infantry, which were soldiers with shields and swords and heavy armor. And you had artillery, which were people with arrows and slingers. Slingers. What, you may ask, is a slinger? Well, a slinger is a warrior who shoots projectiles, rocks mostly. Slingers were a thing. A good slinger could accurately hit a target from 200 yards away. A good slinger could knock a bird in flight out of the air. Goliath was infantry, heavy, heavy infantry. David was a slinger. And David beat Goliath because slingers always beat infantry. You put them out in the field together, mano a mano, 100 times, and David would win every time. National chains, as you could guess, are infantry. They are large, well-organized, bureaucratic, heavily armored, slow-moving. Independence, they are slingers nimble, accurate, fast. You put independence and chains in the same local market and 100 times out of 100 independence win. That's what's been happening and that's what will continue to happen. Now conventional wisdom, it doesn't come from the real world, it comes from business school. And I respect business schools. They can teach you some stuff, but there's a lot you got to learn out in the real world. Business schools teach centralized decision making with decentralized execution of the plan that comes from corporate. And most big corporations, including most chains, they adopt that approach to doing business. Now, on the other hand, military schools teach something very different. They teach the centralization of a mission's purpose, its intent, coupled with decentralized decision-making and execution. Decentralized decision-making. Because the field of battle, like the marketplace, is fluid. It is ever-changing. Independence win because you are decentralized, unafraid to take a risk, nimble, invested, and even fighting on your home turf. You have a better business model. You have a better approach to doing business. AD believes in you. We believe in independence. We are all in, baby, for independence. Now, you would think every buying and marketing group would be all in for independence, but that's not true. There are groups we know that have parts of Motion Industries in them, parts of Graybar, CED, Ferguson, Applied, MSC, buying groups in industries we know. Now, why any independent would want to be in a group for independence that by its very action showed it didn't believe in independence, I don't know. But there's one thing I do know, that no independent deep down can ever be all in for a group like that, a group that isn't all in for them. Earlier this year, we shot some videos of some AD members talking about their companies and what AD really means to them. And I'd like to show you two of these. Please roll the tape. Martin's Supply Company is a third generation uh, family owned business. My grandfather, Lewis Martin, started the business in 1934. We specialize in safety products, fasteners, and cutting tools. 
Through the 70s and 80s, we were starting to see the emergence of the national chains. The independents needed to form together. It ultimately led to the founding of AD Industrial. I consider them trusted business advisors when I need help on things. Sometimes personal, sometimes professional, I call them. AD is more important today than ever. The emergence of the Amazons of the world and, and really what's coming beyond Amazon. When you look at the size and scale of AD, not only in the industrial supply division, but across all divisions, the leverage that $41 billion in collective sales brings this group is unparalleled in the industry. If we all continue working as independents together, then we'll all have the opportunity to win together. And no other group can compete with that. GME Supply and Columbia Safety, we were founded in around 2005. It was me and my computer. That was pretty much all I had. After that, I met Caleb Messer, and that's when the business really started to grow. It's been rapid. We've got a youthful, exuberant workforce, and we've had a growth that's outperformed the market by about 74, 75% for each of the last four or five years consecutively. From the very beginning, AD invited us in as part of the family, and it didn't matter how young our business was. We've had people that have taken a vested interest in us and say, we've been doing this since the 1800s. Here are a couple of things that you might want to make sure that you look out for as you continue to scale your business. We were given access to a buying clout of over $42 billion. That made our organization powerful. It's more than just a rebate. It's a place where companies come to better themselves. There's no one that knows the challenges that we face as industrial distributors better than the brothers and sisters that we have at AD. Some from the 1800s, some from just a few years ago, large, small, Mexican, Canadian, U.S., industrial, residential, commercial. We have 800 amazing independents in our organization, and they are all winners. And we are proud to serve them, and we believe in them. Now, when it comes to our strategy, because we are confident in our members' ability to succeed, we don't believe in getting in their way. We don't believe in making decisions for them. We don't believe in asking them to change their secret sauce. You all have a secret sauce. Protect it. Our strategy, no, our strategy is to bring added value in discrete areas of strategic importance, areas that can enhance what you're already doing, areas where we can utilize our scale that comes from operating in multiple industries to deliver those services and programs cost effectively. Sure, we do the core functions, the, the supplier negotiations, the, the, the reporting, advocacy, and we want those always to be the very best, and they are. But we add to those additional programs and services to bring you strategic value to help you continue to win. Lots of groups say they have value-added services. But let me give you a secret, a way that you can tell whether they really do or whether they don't. Do they have specific people whose exclusive or primary focus is on managing that program. Because if they don't have people attached to that initiative, it is not substantive. We at AD have full-time dedicated staff focusing on exclusively things like meetings, marketing programs, planning programs, promotions, e-commerce, HR, procurement, reporting, advocacy, engagement, these are truly tangible, substantive initiatives where dedicated staff members work under the direction of senior leadership and divisional boards and the corporate boards. Man, we have more than a dozen full-time people working at e-commerce alone. There is accountability, 
There is sustainability, competitive differentiation. And the only reason that we can afford to do any or all of that is because we've got the financial strength, the horsepower that comes from operating across 12 product industries in three countries. 25 years ago, we ventured out beyond the electrical industry. In those 25 years, we've, we've done six startups and we've completed 10 mergers, three this year alone. One of those doubled the size of our bearings and PT division. Another doubled the size of our industrial and safety business in Canada. A third doubled the size of our gypsum division. These mergers strengthened existing divisions. They also lowered the operating costs for every member of AD and gave us financial resources to invest in programs and services. They gave us financial fuel and human capital. They brought new service capabilities like private label, redistribution, and EDI ordering hub. They brought value and scale. When we do a merger, it's not a paper alliance. We do real mergers. Because unless you truly combine businesses, you have neither the will or the way to eliminate redundancy, to share costs, to add value, to make important decisions through governance bodies. Real mergers, real startups, they aren't easy. It's hard work. But you don't get good things without hard work, without effort. So, reason number three to be all in on AD is our way of doing the things that we do. When I say way, I'm talking about culture and I'm talking about governance. We've always had good governance at AD. We've had network representation and the divisional boards and corporate boards and really true, genuine input and collaboration. These have been foundational to our way of working and our decision-making processes throughout AD's history. These good governance practices are not just cute, they've enabled us to grow, to implement countless innovations. And our governance today, as a member-owned group, is even stronger. It's second to absolutely no one. And it gives me tremendous confidence in our ability to collectively navigate the future. Every member has a voice, every member has a vote, and frankly, this is the way it should be. Now, when it comes to culture, I would tell you honestly that our culture could have used some real improvement. It wasn't always as strong as our governance, how we treated each other internally at AD, how we sometimes communicated externally. There was room for improvement. Now, why? Well, to be candid with you, when I was a younger man, I would sometimes allow my passion for excellence, my drive, my goal orientation to get in the way of my ability to work with others in a way that was compassionate and treated them the way they ought to be treated. Maybe some of you have that problem too. It's it, not uncommon among highly driven people. It don't make you a bad person. But left unaddressed, it can erode trust. It can damage morale. It can negatively impact an organization's effectiveness. And to put it bluntly, you can have success with a crappy culture, but you can't have it for long. Now, I'm glad to say that as AD has grown and matured, I've grown and matured too. But being less of an ass is not exactly a plan or a strategy. <laughs> uh, it, it's helpful to have initiatives and a program. It's helpful to have really good people like Ed Crawford and Ted Simpson and Neil Cohen and countless others, some 
that are here today, some that are back home, that you partner with to build the best culture you possibly can in your business. And man, we have been intentional about that at AD. The AD way, our fundamentals, our governance internally, the committees we have, our giving back programs, we really focus on how we treat each other and how we treat you. And has it made a difference? It sure has, in spades. And one objective proof of that is that just this year, our own employees voted AD a best place to work in the Philadelphia area. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's not a very high bar, Philadelphia. <laughs> but it is an accomplishment. So should that matter to any of you? I think so, I do. Because to be all in on a group, you want to know that that group is able to attract and retain and develop talent. And that's certainly the case at AD. We have great people, and we are attracting great people. And we work together with passion, with positive attitudes, and with purpose. We're all in on good governance and a great culture. And so finally, what is our spirit? We have a spirit that says, yes, we can, yes, we will, and yes, we do. We're working to ensure a better tomorrow, but we are all in on today. We return your calls and your emails today. We meet our deadlines today. We deliver on our promises today. We work to make a positive difference in someone's life or business today. Today matters to us, just like I know it matters to every one of you. Successful people, and you are all successful people, take advantage of the opportunities that are right in front of you every day. And sitting right beside you here, you are sitting next to either a fellow independent or a supplier who focuses and supports their efforts with independence. And you have the opportunity today, with just a little effort, to increase your business with them or because of them. You have an opportunity to make a new friend, to develop a closer relationship with people that you've known a long time, to learn from each other, to grow, to prosper. It's not a theory, friends. This is real. This is what we are all about. Great independence, exceptional value, innovative programs, good governance, a culture of caring and respect, a belief that every day is precious and God-given. That is the AD way. For 35 years, I poured my heart and my soul into this great organization. And I hope and pray to go many more. And there is not one day or one ounce of that effort that I regret. As I look to the future, I do so with great confidence and I do so with optimism. I do so because we are strong, we are determined, we are united. And because, friends, there are so many great things for us to accomplish together in the years ahead. So are you in or are you all in? God bless you all and thank you for listening.